Hi everyone, welcome back to NSWIFT Tips. This time we'll see how to stop debuggers from attaching to our app. This is the first thing that attackers will do to our app. So in release builds, it makes sense to disable debugging. Stay tuned to see how. All right guys, so let's have a look at how we can disable debugging on our apps. Uh, because if we have debuggers enabled all the time on your broken phones someone could run GDB and attach to our app process and examine the, me the memory layout set breakpoints and stuff so we really don't want to do that because that's the first step to reverse engineering that's the first step for an attacker to examine our app and the iPhone Dev Wiki page about crack prevention, they're mentioning a procedure available from Apple. It's with this macro, PT Deny Attach. It's an Apple specific uh, constant that prevents debuggers to debug binaries. So basically, when you have that, your app is saying, Debugger, please don't attach to me. Uh, I, don't, I really don't want it to be debugged. And the debugger, usually let's say GDB, will uh, will fail to attach uh, because that's how it's programmed to uh, handle it. However, this is as you can read here, it's bypassed easily now. Every pretty much every tool uh, that's running in jailbreak jailbroken environment for uh, patching, like watch uh, dump decrypted quads dump all of these uh, before were most of them were scripts that run with gdb now they have evolved into unique tools like specific tools that uh, outgrow that have outgrown the period in which they were just simple scripts but back then when they were just scripts this was enough to counter this statement to bypass this statement so an attacker just does this and you're good to go you're attaching to the app and you're debugging it however there's a way in which you can produce you can do the same thing but in a way that will make it really hard for an attacker to attach the bugger to your process. This is how you do it in assembly. Maybe some of you have never written assembly before. I think in my video for uh, showing where I've showed you how to write uh, top level code in Swift, I've have the, I have did exactly the same thing there. Uh, I have added as a top level code this check for debuggers but in this uh, video we'll have a look at exactly how you can write it in your own project and this thing in order to be bypassed the attacker has to first if he gets our binary from the app store he first have to decrypt it then examine it in uh, tools like hopper let's say find this thing this bit of code and knob out it so disable it somehow this is like way harder than just issuing this command before you run gdb that's what we'll do now in addition to this you can obfuscate this assembly instructions so that it's really hard for the attacker to recognize what is happening here but this is basically a call to the operating system so if, if you hide this somehow then maybe you're good to go but here you're setting the defined value pt deny attach by the way is 31 that's why it's wallet as the in register zero as for tar first argument to this call basically this is what's happening and if you obfuscate this you will be good to go like it will be harder cool uh, enough talk 
let's see how we'll do this in Xcode. So let's first create a C file again. It has to be C file because we want to write assembly. And assembly, there's uh, one way of writing it within uh, C functions. It's called inline assembly. And you have a look at it now, how I'll do it. I'm saying advanced because I'll do it not with the simple C function, but I'll do it in assembly. So cool. So let me quickly write the code in here. Okay, so I have written the function. It contains the exact exactly the same assembly. This is how you write inline assembly in a C function. And notice that these strings here are not encoded in the way that I have done in base64 in the same way that I have done it uh, here. I don't encode them because this gets compiled in line. So basically this string is not part of our program. It's, it's just not in the binary. It's the instructions that get there. So that's why you don't need it. If you have this and you call it somewhere, maybe the best place to call it would be as a top level function just like our my previous video uh, so how you write top code again you're deleting this stack and you're creating a new file swift file called main main.swift the name is important here you have to call ui application main but ui application main is part of ui kit so First import UI kit and then called UI application main command line. Yeah, so basically this is as if you have the tag at UI application main on your app delegate. But here this time we can call our function to disable the, uh, the debugger. And if we run it now on my phone. Uh, it will crash again because uh, because we're still on the job broken phone and these are these checks are enabled but let's disable them and we run we run it just to see what will happen so Xcode will launch the app however even his debugger won't be able to attach to our process look what will happen now it's just stopping it really can't can't touch it however if i launch it on my own you will see that it launches nicely and the app runs it's all good but you can't really run it from a debugger thanks for the watching guys maybe for some of you this was your first time seeing assembly in swift project I would advise you to comment every instruction because it is uncommon for devs writing in high level languages like Swift to know assembly. So think about your teammates, make it easy, easier for them by writing commands. Have a good day everyone. Bye bye.